today I have a very exciting video okay we are going to go to Mexico okay so Mexico is where Miss Carlo was born we are gonna travel to Mexico today to visit the one and only Frida Kahlo. As some of you might know, Miss Kahlo is a very big Frida Kahlo fan, okay? Back when she was alive, um, women weren't supposed to wear pants. No way were women supposed to wear pants. Uh, but did Frida care? No. She said, if I want to wear pants, I am going to wear pants. I like dresses, but if I want to, I can wear pants. And I think that um, that's extremely, extremely honorable and inspirational for someone like Frida Kahlo in that time to, to stand up for her right to wear what she wants to wear. I mean, tension. It seems like everyone today knows who Frida Kahlo is, but that wasn't always the case. Like so many women artists throughout history, Frida didn't gain recognition, the recognition she deserved until many years after her death. When she died in 1954, the New York Times obituary headline read, Frida Kahlo, artist, Diego Rivera's wife. It's a little sad, isn't it? She wasn't even known for being just an artist. She had to be someone's wife, but that's how it was back then. Women were known by who their husband was, not by the, women, the woman that they were. Um, today, it's different. Today, you are your own person and no one owns or defines who you are. You are yourself. And you can be who you want to be. You can choose the career you want to do. Be You can be an artist, a lawyer, a doctor, a, a restaurant owner, a business manager, whatever you want to do, a traveler, a vlog artist. You can be anything. So this was how she was known for a long time as the strange wife of famous muralist Diego Rivera. She's now considered one of the greatest artists of the 20th century. A muralist, which is what her husband Diego Rivera was, is someone who um, does beautiful mural paints on, on walls. So that's why it's called a mural, because it's like a wall. So like in the street, sometimes people see like beautiful, beautiful um, paintings on, on walls of this of like buildings and and other and bridges and stuff like that not graffiti um, muralists so it's a different kind of paint okay very different um, and they were very famous back then she is now considered one of the greatest artists of the 20th century Magdalena Carmen Frida Kahlo y Calderon was born just before the outbreak of the Mexican Revolution she lived in La Casa Azul a small house that her father painted blue when she was six, she came down with polio, which left her right leg permanently disfigured. So her right leg was a little bit shorter than her left leg. That's what um, polio was like a big uh, disease that was happening back in those days. Um, and she got it when she was a baby. And so um, her right leg stayed a little bit shorter than her left leg. So she always had a little bit of a limp. Um, when she, uh, let's see, to help her, to help it heal, her father encouraged her to exercise and play sports, but she was always, um, but she always had a prominent limp. Frida didn't plan to be an artist. She wanted to be a doctor and she studied medicine at one of Mexico's finest schools. Everything changed when she was in a bus, in a bus accident at age 18. She was severely injured and spent months in a full body cast, isolated and in pain. She began to paint. So, when she was 18 and she was in this horrific bus accident, I mean, horrible. Um, it literally was so horrible that um, back then it wasn't really known as a bus, it was known as a trolley and the trolley had, um, had poles, right? And one of the poles actually went 
in through her spine and came out the other side of her body, her front side, and um, they, she had many, many surgeries, and she had to lay in bed with a full body cast. I mean, she was just there like that for a very, very, very long time until she slowly was able to move her fingers and her wrists, and her dad got her... Um, Got her some canvases so she could paint and um, at least try to find some sort of goodness in this accident. That was very hard for her. Let's see. Her mother made her an uh, made her an easel she could use while laying down, and her father shared her shared his oil paints. She experimented with bright colors that reminded her of traditional Mexican folk art. The small self-portraits that she created helped her process her traumatic accident. So this is wonderful to know that when you go through something, you can find ways to process it, to help you. And her way was through paint. So through painting, she was able to process that horrific tra or car accident, bus accident. Frida eventually showed four of her pieces to the artist Diego Rivera. Now, remember, Diego Rivera was very famous back then, and she was scared going to him and showing him her work. Um, You've got talent, he told her, and it was true. Her paintings were deeply personal, and yet they combined elements of Mexican art, classical European paintings, and, ne and newer surrealist works. She and Diego eventually married and became part of a thriving Mexican art scene. It was a male-dominated scene, but Frida also encountered women like singer Chavela Vargas, who we're going to learn about, muralist Fanny Rebel, and photographer Lola Alvarez Bravo, the first and only person to exhibit Frida's paintings in Mexico during her lifetime. So what it means by male-dominated is that back then women still didn't have much of a say on what they wanted to do, who they wanted to be. So that was a little hard for, for Frida, but that didn't stop her. Frida remained relatively obscure until the 1980s when a biography about her got people's attention. Feminists and Latina artists began to celebrate her work and she became a cultural icon, now more well known that now more well known than Diego. Frida's life was painful and she created over 140 paintings that reflected it. Unlike many other artists that at the time, Frida didn't paint landscapes or abstract shapes. She painted her real, pained self. She celebrated her flaws, her fears, her country, and her desires, and she did it beautifully. Then, and now, and in our future, women are going to persevere. They're, good, they're always resilient. They're always going to um, fight for their right. And we are all um, amazing human beings, but um, people like Frida really really set the pace for for movement okay for goodness for greatness um some more thing a fun fact is we actually see frida in the movie coco uh if you have the movie i challenge you to watch it so you can figure out who is frida Kahlo. okay all right until next time